Welcome to the Pharmacy Leaders Podcast with your host, Tony Guerra. The Pharmacy Leaders Podcast is a member of the Pharmacy Podcast Network with interviews and advice on building your professional network, brand, and a purposeful second income from students, residents, and innovative professionals. Welcome to the Pharmacy Leaders Podcast Weekend Edition. Sunday edition, I'm not really sure. I always tend to record it on Saturday, but I make sure it gets out by Sunday. Uh, First things first, we're going to talk a little bit about NAPLEX, uh, and we've got a ton of other stuff as well, so we'll talk about jobs and a number of uh, podcasts and uh, YouTube videos that are going to be really helpful with Match and things like that. Uh, So first thing, uh, TLDR Pharmacy put out the how to study for the NAPLEX and pass on your first try. Uh, He has... In the two years that TLDR has been around, he's never actually done a NAPLEX post, so this is extensive. And one of the things he puts in all bold caps, which of course you're never supposed to do unless you really mean it, and I think he should really mean it, is that you need to know brand and generic names. And this is completely self-serving, but I wrote two books that have brand and generic names. And people ask me, like, why did you write you know, Memorizing Pharmacology and not read it yourself? Why did you have you know a narrator do it? And he's Scottish actually, but it's it's more of an English accent. And I had him read it because there's I've, I've seen on the boards like well if somebody has a, you know an English accent, then you know they can read the phone book to me and it'll be fine. And while there's enough narrative in the book that it doesn't sound like the phone book, I kind of took that principle of. Well, if I wanted to learn brand and generic, I don't know if I'd really want Tony reading it to me. But I encourage you to get it for free if you've never been on Audio Audible. Uh, they'll let you have the audiobook Memorizing Pharmacology, which has 200 drugs that I go through, uh, brand and generic, and then 350 drugs on Goodnight Farm. Uh, if you're looking at your RX Prep book and it's kind of a doorstop right now, I recommend this as a quick way to uh, get back on track with some of the brand and generic names, and then visit uh, TLDR Pharmacy's post. Uh, they've got a lot of great links uh, to some other therapeutic classes that I think are really going to help. Uh, if you're finishing up your APPEs, trying to find a job, trying to find a place to live, uh, you may be feeling a little overcommitted, and uh, the Pharmacy Girl has a great uh, blog post on that. And her blog posts are pretty quick hit, so I love being able to just uh, read it really quickly, but uh, I always feel overcommitted. I know I say yes too many times to too many things, uh, and if you're feeling that way, I definitely recommend uh, reading her blog post. Uh, I talked with Career Staff RX uh, this week because I wanted to do an episode on jobs, and uh, I've talked to a couple of people about jobs, but what I really wanted was If you, let's say you're putting out applications and I saw this one uh, blog post that said, you know, I've been in Austin for a year and a half and and I haven't been able to find a job and I'm this old and and I just feel like, you know, I don't know what to do. Uh, So I wanted to know, is there a single phone number or a single website that you could go to? And I'd written a blog post for them before about how to find which areas of the country are... uh, which areas of, area of the country have you know, maybe a little more of a challenge in getting a job and then which uh, are a little bit easier, and you can find that on the uh, Career Staff Rx uh, blog or the pharmacy blog. Uh, but there's a new opening for a pharmacy director in behavioral health here in uh, Iowa, but they have 49 pharmacist jobs uh, on Career Staff Rx that you can look at there. Um, and the website's pretty intuitive. It goes by state, but when I was uh, talking uh, with him, and, and we've done the, the episode, it's, it's in the can, I just need to uh, have it mastered and, and get it out there. But we kind of talked about that um, float pool that a company like this has, or national company, I think they have 20 locations across the country, but that if they're going to hear about a job, then it's going to end up going to that float pool first before it ever gets you know, advertised. And that's the thing is that are you just going out there looking for jobs or are you working and you know are you in maybe a queue to get a job a little bit later so 
uh, I guess in in my head when I thought of the job search, I thought of opening a newspaper. Well, that's bad. Opening a newspaper, totally dating myself, and circling, yeah, maybe this job or maybe that job. And I think you're finding that you are late to the party every time you apply for a job if it's one that's already been advertised. So how do you get on the inside? How do you hear about a job before it's ever posted? Uh, getting with uh, one of these companies may be uh, a way to do it. So again, I don't uh, have any sponsorship deal with these guys. I just uh, think that right now it's a little bit of a scary time because you know maybe the one person, one spouse is going to celebrate Yay, you know, I got a residency uh, in such and such state. And then the other spouse, who might also be a pharmacist not interested in residency, is saying, okay, well, how am I going to get a job? And I think uh, this is a really good solution to that. Okay, uh, What's going on with the podcast? Uh, so thank you guys for listening. Uh, 23,785 uh, downloads last month. So we went from 7,000 in December when we started out, 13,000 in January. 23,785 in February. So it's, it's great to hear that uh, we've really kind of touched on a subject that uh, people want to hear about, which is leadership and uh, pharmacy practice. Um, looking at the number of countries, and I got this from Hillary Blackburn. She looked at the number of uh, countries that her uh, podcast has gone to, and I just did it just for fun to see, you know, what where are people... Uh, listening. And let me put a little uh, caveat to this. Like there's, you know, one person that downloaded one episode in Belarus or El Salvador, but there's 122 countries listening. So I thought that was kind of cool that so many, that this uh, podcast is going to so many different places. Um, In terms of next week, what's going on with the Pharmacy Leaders podcast? On Monday, uh, we focus on women in pharmacy with Jackie Boyle and Sarah Sorum uh, from, and Wisconsin does it a little bit differently. It's the Pharmacy Society of Wisconsin, uh, and uh, those two have a great conversation. Then I uh, talked with President Mark Brunton, uh, CPHT, MSED, from uh, the Pharmacy Technician Educators Council, uh, and the Pharmacy Technician National Meeting uh, is in Indianapolis this year. So <clears throat> I, I really recommend that if you in any way um, educate pharmacy technicians or if you're interested in that as a future profession, that's definitely the place to go. I really love connecting with those guys. It's it's such a super niche uh, it's such a super niche event that you'll really feel at home if you have anything to do with pharmacy technician training because it's about 150 to 300 people rather than, uh, you know, APA, ASHP is like 25,000, APHA is like 5 or 10. Uh, you'll really feel at home there. And then my APPE student, every APPE student that comes through my site uh, is asked to interview someone that's inspired them or that has helped them, and she interviews Sherry Schmidt of uh, GRX Holdings. That's a local when I say local, it's central Iowa. Uh, they have 20 uh, Medicap pharmacies, a long-term care pharmacy uh, solution, and, and a number of other things, but uh, that's on Friday. Uh, looking at the mothership, there were some pretty good episodes uh, this week. Um, elite Wealth Management from uh, those guys at uh, Waypoint Financial, uh, they give a couple of good recommendations in terms of uh, how to work with your money. Uh, Then uh, Todd interviewed Shane Reeves, a pharmacist who's going for Tennessee State Senate. Uh, Obviously, the more politicians that are pharmacists, uh, the better we can articulate uh, how our services and how our profession is helpful uh, to them. Uh, Let's see, Todd was at the PDS Super Growth Pharmacy Conference, and then uh, I always like hearing about pharmacogenomics, and I just love the acronym, the PGX acronym. Uh, but Dr. Jason Cavallina uh, talked with um, the CEO of RX uh, VIP Enterprises, um, talks with Ken Sternfield, uh, and that is really kind of a great, uh, what do I want to say? It, it's really, uh, I really enjoyed uh, hearing about pharmacogenomics because it's something that I don't know a ton about. I'm non-clinical, 
but I always love to hear uh, people talking about what's going on uh, in the future. And uh, going outside the Pharmacy Podcast Network, uh, RX Radio had uh, kind of a compilation of their Alexa briefings, and uh, he talked about how suddenly, uh, and I want to say, I'm not sure if I'm getting this right, if it was Sam's Club, I think, uh, that closed 43 stores and that it was rather abrupt and how, you know, we're talking about maybe 100 people losing their jobs. And, and I don't want to go doom and gloom, but I'm just saying that, again, we really do want to have kind of a side business or a side uh, skill just because uh, we don't want to depend 100% on our primary job. And this isn't any profession. But I was really, it was so many different flash briefings together. It was like 16 minutes. Uh, I really got a lot out of uh, all the different places. And it, it just kind of goes from one to the other. So it's kind of neat. Uh, Talk to Your Pharmacist podcast. Uh, they uh, talked about pharmacogenomics as well. So that's Hillary Blackburn. Uh, so if you want to hear from her on Pharmacy Leaders podcast, it was on our, one of our first episodes. I got to interview her at ASHP. And she talks to someone at One Ohm. And I think the OME is like at the end of genome. Uh, it's not like the mantra, OM, OM. So, sorry, I have a little bit of a cold, so I'm my, uh, my throat's a little bit scratchy. So, um, Hillary Blackburn talks about personalized medicine. Um, another one was the YFP podcast. That was kind of cool. Uh, hearing from Drew Register, I know YFP has uh, affiliation with APHA, or they've had that for two years. And uh, hearing a little bit about what it is to, to get out of pharmacy school and do residency uh, and then he lives in DC or around DC and and I, that's my hometown and you want to talk about one of the most expensive places in the country to live that's it uh you know my my parents home and and my home are probably comparable in terms of <clears throat> there's a little bit bigger but in terms of size but the the cost of our home uh in one of the best neighborhoods in the well, it's actually probably one of the best neighborhoods in the state, same with where my family is, uh, is a third. So our mortgage would be a third of what theirs is. Of course, they bought theirs back in the 80s when it was like two, and then it blew up to whatever it is now. Uh, so, uh, But YFP I like to keep uh, in touch with just because they always have uh, kind of couples a lot of times and then kind of individual practitioners that are just starting. Um, Brian Fung on YouTube. Uh, this is really, I want to say, he published it today. Pharmacy residency rank order list. What are the factors to consider? Uh, so it's about 12 minutes, and I definitely recommend you checking uh, him out on that. It was really, uh, even though I'm not you know, ranking for a residency, I'm always looking for people that are giving great advice, and I think he did a good job there. And then uh, Kevin Yee, I think... Just like a lot of people uh, feel like they have to do residency because everybody else is doing it, and that really comes from everyone who teaches at a pharmacy school is probably residency trained. So when somebody says, well, how do I get a job? They're going to tell you, well, you go do a residency. But if you come to those of us that are in practice, especially non-clinicals, we're like, you don't have to do that. Actually, it may slow you down. So I think that he does a great job with a question that many of you have when you graduate is, well, how am I going to buy a house? And he talks about why you don't need to buy a house, that there are other investments and that you don't necessarily need to do that. And there are reasons not to do that, especially if you're only going to live in a place for a little while. Uh, some of you know that I was a real estate agent for seven years and uh, I finished out that um, that last year with I think ten million in sales. So I I know what I'm doing when when it comes to uh, real estate and talking about it. And that is a big mistake I see is when one the two mistakes I see the most are one people are trying to buy a home because they feel like they have to, and two they spend as much as they possibly are um, as much as they're approved for on the loan. So those are the two big mistakes with real estate. But I definitely th I think you should listen to Kevin Yee. He's got some 10-minute coffee uh, series that he's just started, and I think that's pretty cool as well. So, yeah, he's got like 4,000 subscribers. I just broke the 10,000 subscriber mark, so that's kind of cool that uh, to know that we're, we're giving so much value to the people out there. So, again, this is our weekend update, and 
No, I didn't say weekend update. That's probably like trademark or something. So it's the Sunday pharmacy news update. And again, uh, I do appreciate it if you do uh, recommend or uh, buy the Memorizing Pharmacology audiobook or Goodnight Farm. Uh, and then if you ever have anybody who really struggles with pronunciation, I literally wrote the book, How to Pronounce Drug Names. And they're not going to know they're pronouncing it wrong. It's just like if somebody's house smells bad, they live there, so they don't know it smells bad. So it's not like you can come in with a bottle of Febreze and like, hey, uh, you should use this. But uh, when it comes to drug names, you're really talking about patient safety. So uh, again, that might be a recommendation if you find someone that struggles. So I appreciate it. I appreciate all of the uh, listeners that we have out there. And uh, I will talk to you next week. Support for this episode comes from the audiobook Memorizing Pharmacology, a relaxed approach. With over 9,000 sales in the United States, United Kingdom, and Australia, it's the go-to resource to ease the pharmacology challenge. Available on Audible, iTunes, and Amazon.com. In print, ebook, and audiobook. Thank you for listening to the Pharmacy Leaders Podcast with your host, Tony Guerra. Be sure to share the show with the hashtag hash pharmacy leaders 